Hey folks, it's Marcus from Vaden back here with another Vaden Tips video. This week, I'm going to talk to you about long-running backend tasks and how we can handle those in a nicer way by disabling the button and showing a progress indicator while things are happening on the server instead of just freezing the entire UI. So let's jump into some code and see how we can do this. All right, so here I'm in a Vaden flow project. I have a simple layout with a text field and a button. And when the button is clicked, we call a backend service uh, with the value from the text field. Once that's finished, we show a notification and clear the field. So right now, my backend is super slow. If I type in my name and click say hello, you'll notice that the progress indicator up top goes and then it starts blinking. And then finally, after a while, we get the notification showing that everything was saved. Now, if we look at our backend service here, you'll see that I have two different methods here simulating a slow backend. The first method here, save, just has our thread sleeping for six seconds and then returns. And then we have an async method that does the same, but in a separate thread. So for this async to work in my Spring Boot application, I also added this enable async on my application class. So by doing that, I'll instead get a listenable future back. And that's something that we can use in order to kind of split a long running task to another thread so that our UI thread can continue working uh, while things are happening in the backend. So what I want to do here is that when the user clicks the button, I want to show a progress indicator and disable the button so that the user doesn't try to resubmit this heavy operation a bunch of times just because it seems like everything's frozen. So first of all, let's create a new uh, progress bar. We'll just call this progress bar and initialize it to a new progress bar like that. And we'll configure this. So we'll take the progress bar and set it to indeterminate because we don't know how long this task will take. If we did, we could update it. But for now, we'll just set this to uh, indeterminate. And we'll hide it by default. So when we don't have a pending operation, we'll just hide it. Set visible uh, false, like this. We'll add it to our layout here. And also, I'll give it a width, just so it's not super long. So I'll give it a width of, say, 200 pixels, so it's somewhat manageable. Now, what I want to do then is here in the save method, I want to show the progress bar, disable the button, call the backend, and then do the same things in reverse. So hide the progress bar and enable the button. So something like this. So we'll take the progress bar and we'll set visible to true. So now we hide, uh, show it, then we'll take the button and we'll set enabled to false. And then once we've called save here, what we want to do is do the same thing, but in reverse. So we'll take the progress bar and set visible to false. And we'll take the button and we'll set uh, enabled to true. And then we'll show the notification and, and all of that good stuff. Now, if I run this right now, it's not going to work exactly the way we would expect it to. So I type in something, press hello, and it works exactly the same way as before. So the thing to note here is that Vaden Flow is a server-driven framework. So when I click the button here, a request goes back to the server. This Java code, all of it runs. And then at the end of it, a response is sent back here. Now, because the server is taking forever, uh, it's blocking this from returning. And by the time we actually return something to the server, we've, uh, to the client, we've already gone and reset these back to the initial value. So to the end user, it seemed like nothing actually happened. So we need to actually use the asynchronous method here uh, in order for that to work. Now, the async method, as you remember, returns a listenable future. So we need to listen. Uh, in order to understand when it's completed. So on this, we can add a callback, and it takes in two callbacks. The first one is 
the result callback so when things go well and then we have a separate callback so if we have an error we can do something about that okay so in the result callback then here's essentially where we want to when things have completed successfully that's when we want to actually do all of all of this work and if things go poorly let's for now just do a notification notification.show boo something very useful like that okay so if we save this right now let's see what happens this is almost what we need but not quite everything so we'll uh, type in something press say hello see that we now get the progress bar here and the button gets disabled so that's good but then nothing happens so the problem right now is that because this is an asynchronous call, this has kind of spun off a separate thread. The execution went all the way back here. We returned the new state to the client. In this case, that uh, progress bar is visible and the button is enabled. But once this completes, once this happens, we don't have a way right now for the server to tell the browser that, hey, this thing completed, do something about it. So for that to work, we will need to go into our main view and we need to enable push. Push opens up a web socket between our server and our client, meaning that we'll have a two-way communication between the two. So if we go to our view now, we have a way of uh, updating the UI. Now in order to do that in a thread safe manner, we need to use an accessor method on UI. So in order to do that, what I'll do is I'll save the UI instance into a variable. So that'll be ui.getCurrent. I'm saving this here because when we're returning here in the callback, we're not actually on the Vaadin thread. So if we were to call ui.getCurrent here, that wouldn't return anything because it's not a Vaadin thread. But since we now have it in our scope, we're able to use it. And the way we update the Vaadin UI from a separate thread is by using ui.access, which takes in a command. And within this command, we can then safely update the UI. And once we've updated the UI, Vaadin will use that WebSocket connection to push those changes. So we'll do the same here. We'll have our command, which will then show a notification like that. Okay, so let's see what happens. So now if I type in my name, say hello, we get the progress indicator here, the button gets disabled. And then after a while, we get the notification, the button gets enabled again, and the progress indicator is hidden. Okay, so there you have it a way for you to use UI.access to update Vaadin UI from a background thread. By using background threads, you're able to spin off longer running tasks into separate threads, which means that your UI thread can stay responsive. Now, if you're using background threads, be sure to use the UI.access uh, method in order to both be thread safe uh, with the Vaadin application, but also to let Vaadin know that you changed something and that those changes need to be pushed over to the browser. And for those to be pushed over to the browser, you also need to enable that push annotation on your main uh, layout. Now we have a in-depth uh, course on the website about using push and asynchronous backend tests. So be sure to check that out if you wanna dig deeper into this topic and learn some more. If you have any more questions about the content here, if you have ideas for new videos, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.